Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with another amazing mini expo. Thank you for tuning in today for this live stream of my amazing interview with the most beautiful Janelle. Hello, Janelle. How are you today? Hello there, Dr. Glow. How are you? I am so amazing. I'm so happy to finally be able to sit here and talk about you and your amazing cupcakes. Um, <laughs> Only one, only people I know. When people see your cupcakes running, they drop everything that they're doing just Thank to make sure they get at least two. Thank All right, you. They are definitely phenomenal. So, please tell me what's the name of your business. Sure, absolutely. So, my business is called Holy Sweets NYC, uh, where the angels eat your calories, and where that kind of stems from is that you know it's heavenly. Uh, we create beautiful desserts. Um, in addition to that, you don't have to worry about your calorie count because we cater to a lot of different dietary needs, um, whether it's sugar free, gluten free, eggless, anything that you're looking for, we have it just for you and cater it and customize it just for you and your event. Yeah, that's amazing because sometimes people, I've had some vegan based cakes before and they tasted like cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, don't, I just don't get it. And then I get yours and they're so soft and so fluffy and moist. It's, it's just amazing. It's like, a lot I'll tell of love. It's a, it's a lot of love that's mind. put into it. It's a lot of passion. It's a lot of years yeah. as well. You know, that's really where it mm -hmm. comes from. I'm not going to start here and say that the first time I created these desserts, they came out. No, <laughs> they didn't even look good. They were they were not even looking the way that they should be looking. However, after time, you know, progress, I've been able to cultivate these delicious recipes that I've stick to through and through. Um, cake baking for me and designing desserts are just what I love to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's mainly because of the people. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always money behind everything. We all are encouraged and motivated when it comes to money. But when you have customers coming back to you and telling you about how they enjoyed it, just like you did, you know, had a little snippet of this. I tried this here. How did I get, how, how can I get my hands on this? That's what's important to me. That's where I'm just like, yes, I want to do it again. Let me, let me push forward. Let me try this new dessert. Let me try this new recipe and put it out for my clients to try. So it's so what I love to do. That's why it's it's all so fluffy and so nice and so sweet and so pretty because it's what I love. It's what I love. That's difficult. So how long have you been operating this business? So officially um, two years, uh, okay. but I started baking, getting into that, started naming Holy Sweets around 2017. This was more so when I was doing a lot of it was more so of uh, donation base. When mm -hmm. we started Holy Sweets NYC, it was more so to uh, fill the need in the community. And we're mm -hmm. still doing that. So how we do that is when we started, uh, we got attached to a shelter and there was a family at the shelter who was celebrating a birthday the next day for a child, but did not have the means to actually purchase the cake, purchase balloons, purchase the toys and all of that. And something in me was like, go to Walmart and go get some stuff and create it and come and bring it back to them. Yeah. And that's what I did. Um, never baked a cake in my life, never baked cupcakes, never did any of that stuff. But something in me was like, let's just go do this. And yeah. from the moment that I did that and I saw their response, saw the mother and how grateful she was and the children, how grateful they were as well. I said, I want to do it again. And I'm not looking for anything back. It's just seeing the emotion, seeing the feeling and just seeing how grateful everyone was. I just mm -hmm. started, to do it, started to do it more, started doing it in my church, start giving back to shelters, start giving back to community kitchens, um, work with schools and things of that nature. And that's really where it came from. Like, okay, now I really need a business business because yeah. people want to order now. Mm -hmm. Seeing the work that's taking place and they want to get attached or they want to try it. So that's how we really developed Holy Sweets NYC. And even to this day, we're donating to weddings, we're donating to baby showers, community baby showers, because there's always a need for that. And sometimes people just don't have the means to do so. So I have the means, I'm going to feel the need. I love the fact that your business started with a purpose because I, I had an interview last night. One of my things I ended with is that people should chase the purpose and not the bag. Mm. The bag will always come when you're chasing your purpose. Right. So, and I think that's just clear. And that just makes so much sense because even yeah. that, that model of going and donating to those things, People are still mm -hmm. going to try your products and they're going to want to yeah. buy from you in the yeah. future anyway, yeah. or they're going to pay it forward and say, Hey, they donated this stuff to me, really invest in her brand because this is what type of work that she's doing. I think that's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's a great angle. Thank you. And I know it's not an angle for you, but it's a great angle. And Thank a lot of people you. don't understand that. There's like, okay, I just want to get more customers. Sometimes you have to give a little bit to actually get customers. 
so people can try your products. Yeah. Put yourself out there. Put yourself out there and see what happens. And like you said, not everything is about the bag. It's really about the purpose. Why are you doing this? Why did you create the business? Why are you attaching yourself to it? Why are you investing in this process, mm -hmm. time and money? You know, there's yeah. a lot that goes into a business and how to run a business behind scenes and separate from what people see on the outside, separate from what people see on social media. Mm -hmm. So it really is, what is your purpose and what's the reason why? Because when things get really rough and things don't look as pretty and it's not all uphill what's mm -hmm. you to the next level <laughs> i'm happy you mentioned that because <laughs> especially for this particular year um i i know it's been challenging for for people i've had it's been an interesting pivot of a year for me as well with really living all of my dreams at one time because what happens is when you put your engine your energy into is what's going to thrive right mm -hmm. and trying to maintain that balance can be crazy especially as an entrepreneur so i you know i agree with you wholeheartedly when you sit here and say it's not always everything going uphill sometimes is you running up the hill and somebody taking a bat and knocking you back down Right. And then having to get back up and run back up the hill again, mm -hmm. especially as entrepreneurs constantly trying to thrive through. Right. So um, in regards to the the business, right? So describe to some people, so I always do cake decorations as well. When you've featured in my magazine, I've put a beautiful picture of you decorating you. the cake inside the magazine. So talk to me about your process and how did you really learn those skills on how to decorate a cake? Yeah. So a lot of people ask me that question um, and I tell them it's something that I just taught myself. Um, mm -hmm. I've learned that I'm really good at observing and then duplicating. So mm -hmm. when I was curious on how to create my first wedding cake, I looked on uh, YouTube University and I said, okay, what are the steps that I need to take? How do I do this? And I practice. And I realized with myself also is that once I try something one time and I don't get it that first time, best believe I'm getting it the second time. There's no mm -hmm. third time. It's the second time we're going to get it down pack. And so I was able to teach myself how to um, learn the fundamentals of baking. Um, you know, mm -hmm. when people go to school for it. You can do what works for you. But my avenue was I'm going to teach myself and then work it through. And we're going to do trial and error and see what works best. Um, so when it came to the decoration portion, that was just the creativity in me. Um, yeah. You can decorate a cake however you decide to decorate a cake. And that's what I teach a lot of my students is it's all what's within you. You know, you can duplicate mm -hmm. something that your client is looking for, but we don't, we're not copycats. We're not going to do everything exactly how we see it in the picture. We're going to do mm -hmm. it based off of what we feel and what we want to see and how we feel the finished product should look, right? Yeah. So teaching myself um, a lot of practice over the years, trial and error, like I said, and then also just experimenting because there are always new trends that are coming out with every genre, every field, every industry. And when it comes to cake artisans, there is something we are always creating that is brand new that some people just mm -hmm. like, just catches like fire and it just, you know, it goes viral or something like that. So I like to practice different techniques. Um, I like to also look at European um, artisans because it's different than American, you know? Well, and makes sense. I, yeah, see what I can pick from that because everyone, every culture has a different type of way that they do something. And it's always nice to be able to incorporate that into whatever you're putting forward because you want to be fresh. You want to be new. You want people to be attracted to what you have to offer. So that's what I have learned to do myself. Oh, that is definitely dope. I, I appreciate that. I love YouTube University. I've built decks, <laughs> yard, like a lot of my yard, like even my, my fire pit in my backyard. I built that by hand. So I built mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And in I there. see and that. It, yeah. And YouTube is my best friend. And I, I see it in person. Like, yes. Yes, beautiful, definitely beautiful work. Thank you. So rewarding. Um, so talk to me. Like right now, the world, we people, a lot of people talking about the economy, especially in customer based customer based businesses. Mm -hmm. How are you, or what types of pivots have you put in place to insist and continue to thrive during this rough ride that a lot of entrepreneurs are having right now? Sure. So what I've realized is don't sleep on ebooks, don't sleep on e anything, anything electronic that you can create using whatever platform. I like to use uh, Canva. Whatever you can create and sell, do that. Um, I'm actually mm -hmm. in the process of creating an ebook specifically for cakes and sips. Um, that's something that has been going around, but not a lot of people have attached themselves to it. And that's what I did recently on September 28th. I put on a cake and sip event. 
which was such a great success and so grateful for everyone who attended, all my vendors that were there. Um, and if, for those who don't know what a cake and sip is, it's essentially like a paint and sip, but you're actually learning how to create your, your own cake. So you're creating it from um, the layers that I give you, uh, buttercream that I give you, and you are able to stack those cakes together and then you're decorating it however you want to. And in nice. the process, we're drinking a little something, something and whatever you, whatever relaxes you and makes you feel good. That's what we're sipping on. That's what we're doing and just listening to music. And it's a vibe. It's an experience and you're learning something brand new. And a lot of people attach themselves to things like that because they want to learn something different. They want to do yeah. something different. Um, so doing things like that and creating an ebook that, you know, teaches people how to create um, an actual cake and sip event is in the process that I'm, I'm actually working on. And in addition to that, I also teach um, one-on-one -on -one classes. So for oh, nice. individuals who are just getting into the industry, just looking to understand how to start their cake business or even how to do a specific design. That's something I do on the side as well. Um, I've also taught at different schools um, during COVID specifically when we were not getting too close to one another and we were kind of mm -hmm. six feet apart. Um, I would provide the schools with the cakes and the buttercream and the tools and it would go to their individual homes and then we would all get on Zoom and then we would do a whole class and it's a very bonding experience for the parents and the children at home and then also it's an activity that you're doing that you wouldn't normally do at home at as well. So yeah. the different avenues that I've been able to take, um, we're still donating, we're still giving, we're still doing that, we're still attaching ourselves to community um, because community is important. Mm -hmm. you know that, get attached to community. Um, and then in addition, there are contracts. Yeah. getting attached to contracts, um, getting mm -hmm. attached to businesses that are looking for certain services that you can provide, whether it's government contracts or it's something that's separate. So mm -hmm. that's how I've been able to work it through in between with the economy and how things have sh shifted. And then of course, I have my reoccurring customers that will always come back. I thank God have not lost customers. Customers have come back to me, um, come back yeah. to the business and want to, again, experience what we were able to provide them um, and, and tenfold. So that's what's happening. Yeah, I, I what I'm hearing is that you are being clear about the fact that most, some business owners, this is where they mess up at. Mm -hmm. They have an idea. They come up with one way that they insist on making money. Right. And then they keep on going with this one way. It might have thrived through the years and then all of a sudden they started starts to decline. Mm -hmm. And then they're wondering why they're declining. It's because you need to have at least five different ways that your business is streaming in revenue. It's right. such an important concept. And it's right. like right now I've been exploring and doing a lot of looking up and interested in the pop-up market because when Black Girl Everything started in 2020, the pop-up market was what it was. You right. were pop-ups, you was hosting them and still month, everybody's doing and, it. And, and they're is, yeah. happening, but are they happening to the same capacity? And mm -hmm. how are they happening? And then it's also because people are they're attaching experiences to them. People want to actually do things when right. it comes to these different things. That's how you get people in this space. Mm -hmm. It's like for me, like the retreat that I have is in March. It's three days of amazingness because it's experiences through the whole thing. You know, the karaoke and swim, making your own pizza, you know, brew, black owned brew beers, and then, you know, going into speakers and, and candle making classes and all these other things that's mm -hmm. happening on Saturday. And then the brunch is because it's three days of like, let's have fun, let's connect. And it's not just, let me sit here and talk to you about your business. <laughs> that's not what it is, you know? Because who, who wants to come to that? Not me. Right. Um, Right. We have enough of that. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I love that. I love that breakdown. People like to be engaged. Yes. <laughs> Don't bore me. Right. I'm not coming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not coming. Yeah. It's just, it's just so interesting, but yeah, but you're hitting it right there. You're hitting it right there when you're talking about making sure you have multiple streams of ways of Absolutely. that. You're make, your business is making money because if you're relying on one, the moment that that one stops feeding your business, you you're are lost. suffocating. You're lost. Yeah. You're yeah. Lost. You're lost. And it's almost like resetting because you have to figure out how to get that one to work again. Yeah. Um, no way. Multiples. Yeah. Mm -mm. Absolutely. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. So that's why I tell people the word pivot is so important. It's like mm -hmm. you got to pivot at certain times. You can't continue doing the same thing and expect different results. It doesn't work right. like that. Right. You got to do something new because people want to see something new. And it's, it's not feasible. Let's, let's be honest. It's not feasible. 
even uh, separate from a business, uh, every everyday lives, most people have one job. And let's just say you are laid off from that one job. What is the plan? What what's happening? There's always a there always should be a backup. There always should be something mm -hmm. that's holding your hand while you're doing what you're doing. You know, so it's important to have. And I like the number five. Five is really big. You know, that's just I think I probably have three, four, but five is huge, and I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely dig it. I definitely dig it. I, you know, I told people I was released from one of my contracts in July, and I was, and I told people all the time I was grateful that I had other streams of revenue. Mm -hmm. Cause I have like five. So it's like, for me, I was like, okay, I have five. So I'm all right. Good. I'm all right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but if you're, if you don't have that. And I, it is really reminding me of individuals who just go to and clock somebody's clock from nine to five every day. And then that say that business goes belly up and you just sitting there like, what am I going to do now? Right. Right. Uh -oh. Always have multiple streams. Yeah. Okay, you live in so. America. Anything can happen word especially if it doesn't exist already just make it up and people are like oh really yeah <laughs> Let, let's be again we live in america you can sell anything you can create anything even if it's a lie people will purchase it how many how all many day have been created based off of lies yeah. literally as long as you have a great strategy you're able to market it you can get a following to like oh yes that is interesting let me get attached to that you can sell anything you can word. sell anything they Agreed. do it all the time Mm -mm. Like people just need to get with it. Tell them <laughs> all day long, get with it. Start a business tomorrow. <laughs> That's definitely dope. So you're next. So you mentioned to me earlier that you have another cake event coming up. And yeah. when is that going to be? December 14th. So oh, we are wow. having, yes, once again, it's going to be the same um, outlay. It's going to be mm -hmm. our cake and set. We're going to be decorating cakes. It's going to be a little Christmas theme. But of course, it's going to be incorporated pink. If you know anything about Holy Sweets NYC, we are all pink, pink, pink. So they're going to be gorgeous pink roses that we're going to be putting on the cakes. Um, what I loved about that entire experience when we put it on in September is the smiles on everyone's faces. Everyone is just enjoying what they're doing because it's something yeah. that they've never done before and I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people while I was doing it like how do you do this how do you do this on a daily this is so difficult cake decorating is difficult it is a difficult mm, I would think so but cakes together and put filling inside of it and then stack them on top of each other make sure that the buttercream is is nice and clear make sure that there is no bubbles there's no pitfalls there's no sliding it's everything is even it's difficult it is difficult but mm -hmm. you know what with the right instruction and the right direction you'll be able to get to the finish line a hundred percent so if you're interested in coming to our cake and sip on december 14th feel free to head over to holysweetsnyc.com. That's where you can be able to purchase your tickets. Um, and of course, everything is included. All you are bringing is yourself. That is dope. I'm really excited about that. As you see, I'm going to put that right on my calendar for December Please do. 15th. Please do. Like, definitely. So, but no, so what else do you have going on? Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? What are we declaring today? Ooh. Why are we doing this right now? <laughs> I'm always, this is always going to be my question. Will people understand that language? I'm always going to ask you what you What are we you. declaring? You yes. know, something that I have been and want to stress more, um, more into, and that's what I brought up earlier is those contracts. What I realized is that government contracts and the contracts as a MWBE, um, uh, registered as a MWBE, just puts you in so many doors and so many avenues yeah. uh, that I really need to get attached to myself heavy, heavy. Um, even as a DOE vendor, there are so many different schools throughout New York City that you can also get attached to, or my business can get attached to that will allow us to call, catapult into a different level. Um, mm -hmm. So next five years is really going to be heavy on contracts. As much as I love creating specific uh, custom cakes for my clients, as mm -hmm. well as what wedding cakes and desserts, you know, those are things that I used to do heavy, but now it's more streamlined towards the contracts because that's where the money is. That's where, mm -hmm. you know, the effort is not as heavy. Um, yeah. we'll let you know, this is what I need for this date. And the amount that they pay is triple tens more than what I would get for one cake in the same amount of time. So yeah. um, strategy wise, it makes more sense for the business to go in that direction because it just works. It just works. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. And then in addition to that is two in five years have at least minimum two staff members okay. um, on the team to assist me when it comes to these events, um, when it comes to even our pop-up events, um, whether we're displaying it at a wedding expo or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, but to have staff along with me as a team. Yeah, I, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned through a lot of the work that I've done is that I can't do everything on my own. Yeah. So like I'm sitting in my school, this is my school's office I'm in right now, but um, around the corner for my, the sensory gym is open. I'm mm -hmm. not there, but it's open because I'm not getting myself caught into, oh, I can't do that because I'm not available. Yeah. Right? So bringing people on was the, the biggest thing that I had to do like a year and a half or two years ago. I really How was that process for you? That. Um, trusting. Mm -hmm. It was about trust and trusting the quality of the work that I needed to get done. But I want to lead a certain type of life. I want to be able to walk away from things. I want to be able to travel. Like the month of August, I was on vacation most of the month of August. I was out of the country, right? First time I did that in my whole life and I came back. Everything was still here and everything ran well because I've trained my teams to be able to handle certain things. Mm. So I, I I hear you with five years. I, I challenge you to five months. Thank you. Thank I you. challenge you to that because if you're really talking about expanding and growing the way you need to grow and hosting these different types of events, figure if you have a cake, a cake and sip that's going on in Brooklyn, but you decide you want to do one in New Jersey at the same time because somebody contracts you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I can't because I'm not available. Yes, you are. You book yourself a contractor to go and do the other event. Exactly. exactly. Right? And, and, that's, and that's how people really scale. And that's how business is really run. It, it can't be run on the back of the hands of just one person. No, it's not feasible. And we see that. We know it. No. We see how businesses, as small as like, not as small, but just as simple as a fast food restaurant, like <laughs> thousands and millions are hired to run them across the world, across yeah. the world, not just in one place. So that makes a lot of sense. You you need it. You can't do it. If you want to go farther, you have to do it with the team, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, we saw these, even these smaller, you know, like mom and pop businesses, they exist, that they run their whole lives. Figure if they put other people in place to run them and they allow their brain the opportunity to create <clears throat> other things that's going to give them other streams of revenue, right? Yeah. Because that's what happens because once you free up that brain power, that you're putting into doing all the physical work yourself and having people do it is going to allow you to create other opportunities mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're going to have the space to think through it, to figure it out. Because if you're not giving yourself the capacity or the space to think, you're not going to think about, you're not going yeah. to get anything done because you need to be able to create. So yeah, so I, I'm hands on with that idea of how can I, how and who can I scale specific things to? Right. What can I outsource? Because otherwise you're just not going to get Right, right. Yeah. And then looking for different avenues within um, the city, the government, um, mm -hmm. the commerce for support resources. Yeah, definitely. There's yes, so we, many it's amazing. resources for small businesses mm -hmm. that are free, dot com, like free, in a free, 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 free. For you to just hop on to and get attached to, to support your business. When I just started my business, um, the Queen's Chamber of Commerce were the ones who created my website for free everything mm. for free. All I had to do was tell them what I wanted. I sent them yeah. some photos, some verbiage. And next thing I know, I have an entire website for free that I didn't have to pay for, for an entire year, because it was a service that they were doing for the community of Queens. Just yeah. like that, it is in every borough, every state, there are so many different places that you can get support and resources and services just to support your business and help you actually scale your business at the same time. So if you were looking into that, please, please take some time to like look into what the Chambers, chambers has to offer. And then in addition mm -hmm. to that, just see what your community have to offer. Attach yourself to businesses that are either doing the same thing that you're doing. I like to tell um, my students, when you are starting out as a bakery, go to other bakeries within your community. See if there's things that you can make that they aren't making. Offer it to them. Offer it to them and see mm. what they would say. If they are a cafe and they only sell coffee, see if you can make croissants and have it weekly delivered to them on a weekly a bulk price or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. There are businesses that are looking to ship things out, but don't have someone to create it. There are so many avenues to do and work yourself into it when you're started. Um, I also like to tell them, you know, 
specifically when you have products, what is your hero product? What is that one product that you know that you can consistently make and make money off of and then add additional products on? But what is that staple product that you have? My staple mm -hmm. I started were cupcakes. As simple as that. I started out with cupcakes. I didn't know how I was going to get to cakes, but I got to cakes eventually. But cupcakes was something that was stable, something that was consistent, something I knew that I could not mess up, something that I knew people were coming back for over and over and over again. What is that hero product? And then I built off of that. And I went into cakes. I went into chocolate cover everything. I went into mm -hmm. fondant cakes. I went into wedding cakes. It's endless, but you have to start somewhere and then get yeah. support from other places as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all great advice um, for people who are watching to be able to tune into this so many ways. Yeah. And again, it goes, it rise back to that multiple streams, like figuring out how you can utilize it and get other people to work for you without even working for you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, outsourcing, getting your products into spaces. There's a lot of people who you can walk in like, hey, can I get a shelf? What do you mean? I just want that shelf right there. A shelf? Yeah, just give me a shelf. Just put my sign right there. And I would tell people to come to your store because my shelf is in here. And then they're going to come and they'll buy your products because they're coming yeah. in for me anyway. Yeah. 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 Just yeah, like collaboration that. is everything. It, it benefits you in so many ways. With, without doing anything other than asking. Clearly. As simple as that. As simple as that. Take yeah, a note somewhere and get a yes somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, I'll get a hundred no's. You'll be all right. It builds character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> builds character. But you know, um, how can people find you? This has been an amazing conversation. Absolutely. So everything from TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, any so any social platform, it's always gonna be H O L Y S W E E T S N Y C. So that's Holy Sweets N Y C on every platform. That's perfect. So, you know, thank you so much for your time today. Of course. Um, it, it was such a pleasure. Thank all you. this great advice that people were getting from this interview today. Of course. Really, better watch it on Rewind. <laughs> that definitely. Well, hopefully, hopefully. And then our website is uh, okay. www.holysweetsnyc.com. All right, perfect. So thank you all for tuning in for this mini expo. It's going to live on the Black Girl Everything YouTube page. So check us out. You can follow other businesses who are also posted on there. Well over 200 videos. Very excited to be in season seven right now. So thank you all for tuning in. Everybody have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Have a holy sweets day.